here, but this is going on page 25 when we're done. Okay, yeah, that's all right. Okay, so graphing functions. So we're going to identify the parent function and do transformations without making a bunch of t-charts and whatever. We're going to look at the anchor points on the first two. We're actually going to put them on there because I want to just want to make sure you understand what I mean by that and what we're actually doing with that. Um, but then you don't have to actually graph the anchor points moving forward. All right, so let's start with this one. What is this parent function called? Absolute value. So this is the absolute value. And so f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. And the other thing we want here is just a quick little sketch of the parent function. Okay, so those three things on all of them. The name, the function itself, and then a quick little sketch. Now, how many transformations are happening with this one? Three. Okay, and I'll make sure you know how to tell that because that was a question I had yesterday as well. I've got three numbers going on, so there's three things there. If there was a negative sign, that would be a fourth. So I have three things that I have to look at. First, I'm going to look at this one-fourth. What is that one-fourth telling me? Good. It is a vertical compression by what? A factor of one-fourth. Very good. And then the two means we do what? Left two. And then the five means we go up five. Okay? All right. Everybody good with that? Now. The order in which people were answering those questions yesterday, you know, I, I always go from left to right, but, you know, some people were going, I don't know, from right to left or jumping around, whatever, it didn't matter. But you have to make sure that your translations, your left, right, up and down, are last. Because if you do those before you do other things, you're going to get the wrong answer, okay? So the rest of them can be in any order. Just make sure if you're shifting left, right, up or down, those are the last things that are, that are listed because those are the last things that should be happening. Okay, so let's look at the anchor points for... Um, oh, something's weird with this, hang on, something's weird with the, oh, so I can't, <laughs> I can't click colors, okay, well, with the graphs. All right, so then, let's look at, let's think anchor points, so our anchor points for the absolute value, well, zero, zero was one of them, so I'm going to put little X's where the anchor points go, and again, you're not going to have to graph them every time, I just want to make sure you all understand what I mean by that. Then we used negative one, one, and one, one. And those were the only three we had, and that's fine. That may be plenty. Or it may be that after we do this, we decide we might need some other ones. So we start with a point. It doesn't matter which one. Um, sometimes I start with the zero, zero if there is one, because it's usually the easiest one. Or sometimes I start from the left. It really doesn't matter. We'll start with zero, zero here. So then I'm going to do these transformations. I'm going to have a vertical compression by one-fourth. Well, at zero, zero, it's still at zero, zero. Then I move to the left two, one, two and up one, two, three, four, five. So that's my new zero, zero point, okay? Then I'll go to negative one, one. Well, vertical compression by one fourth means the y value gets multiplied by one fourth, so that one becomes one fourth. Then from here, I go to the left two, and up one, two, three, four, five. Now, that third anchor point there, <clears throat> is it something that I actually need to count through like I just did, or can I use some symmetry? I can use symmetry, because if this point came here, then this point's going to end up right there. Now, because it is like a fourth, and we're kind of estimating, and it's kind of really close, wouldn't hurt to have one more point. Okay, so one more anchor point that would make sense to be easy here, since I'm multiplying by one fourth, is if I did four, four, right? So if I start at four, four, I have, that would be a point on my, my parent function. My vertical compression of one fourth brings me down to one. Then I go to the left two and up one, two, three, four, five. And that's right on an actual point that I can plot for sure, so I feel a little bit better about that because the other ones are like estimations. So again, it's just, I can just use that symmetry, one, two, three, four, and that would be the other point right there. Then you use a straight edge of some short sort. Your ID makes a great straight edge. You can just plop it up there on the table. I'm gonna cheat a little bit. Huh? Mm-hmm, yeah. So it goes here. I know you do, though, because I checked you when you came in the door. Um, <clears throat> and then looks like that. Okay? What questions do you have at this point? Are we good? All right, so now we have to look at domain, range, x-intercepts, y-intercepts. So 
domain. What is the domain of this function? Negative infinity to infinity, open and open, right? What about the range? Five to infinity. Is five opened or closed? Closed, because we include it. X intercepts, are there any? No, now just because you don't see it cross doesn't mean that there isn't any, but because of the way it is, there's not gonna be any, there's none. The Y intercept, is that something I get to guess off the graph? No, every now and then it'll be one of the things you actually plotted, and so that's great, but it's not here. So I have to find the y-intercept. In order to do that, I find f of what? Zero. So f of zero equals one-fourth times the absolute value of two plus five, right? So a fourth of two is what? One-half. So this is basically five and a half, but I want it as an improper fraction, so what would that give me? 11 over 2. So this is going to be 0 and then 11 halves. Critical points. What's included in a critical points? Absolute minimum, absolute maximum, relatives, and what else? Point of inflection. Okay, so there's like five things there. Does this graph have any of those? Has an absolute minimum. Okay, so we have an absolute minimum, and that point is at negative two, five, is correct? And that is an ordered pair, not an interval. So don't go putting union signs and close things, that makes no sense, okay? Is this increasing anywhere? Yes, from what? Good, negative two to infinity, and then it's decreasing from negative infinity to negative two. No, not for increasing and decreasing. Because remember, at that point, like, is it increasing or decreasing? We don't know, because that's when it switches, and that's one of those that's kind of a matter of opinion thing. Turn that off, please. All right. <clears throat> All right, oh, our end behavior. Um, as x approaches infinity, what happens to f of x? It approaches infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, what happens to f of x? It's still positive infinity, right? Do we all understand why it's positive, positive? Yes, sure, okay. All right, any questions on this one? All right, let's do this next one. What is this thing called? <clears throat> Quadratic, good Lord. That's been a tough one at the door for whatever reason. So f of x is equal to x squared, and your parent function, of course, looks like this. How many transformations are happening here? Four, okay, there's four of them. So I've got that negative, which means for sure it's a reflection. This one is a reflection in what? X, okay, so it's a reflection in the x-axis. Then the three is a what? Good, it's a vertical stretch by a factor of three. That negative four, right four, and the six, up six. All right, what questions do you have at this point? Remember, if you have a question, you don't understand why something is, you better speak up now. It's fine to speak up. Nobody's gonna make you feel stupid. There's probably somebody else wondering it too. You good? Okay, <clears throat> so our anchor points for this one are at zero. Well, I just can't see my transformation. All right, so zero, zero, and we had, oh, I don't want it to point, sorry. I want it to be a, a little X. And we won't graph them for real after this, but. So there's an anchor, anchor point, then I had these. Now these were the same three I started with for the absolute value. I needed two more for this. So I had to be at two, four. It's okay, I got an eight last period too. That's, <laughs> that's cubic, but that's all good. Okay, so those are my five anchor points, right? Which I usually only have to do about half of them because you've got some symmetry going on. But that's, that's where we would start. That's your parent function. So then we're gonna look at what our transformations are. This time I'll start with the far left one, okay? Because you could, I would, you could either start here or here, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna start with this one, and I'm going to reflect it in the x-axis. When I do that, I go down here. That's a reflection in the x-axis. Then I have a vertical stretch by three. That doesn't mean I add three, that means I multiply the y value by three. I'm at a negative four, so I gotta go to negative 12, which means I go two off the graph down here, okay? Then I'm gonna to go to the right four, one, two, 
three, four, and then I go up six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then that's my actual point there. Okay, does that make sense? Then I'm gonna go to negative one, one. I reflect in the x-axis, go to negative one, negative one. Vertical stretch by three, my y value becomes negative three. Move to the right, four, one, two, three, four, and up, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, everybody with me so far? Zero, zero, I reflect, it's still there. I stretch, it's still there. Then I move to the right, four, one, two, three, four, and up, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And then the other ones, what? Did I lose you somewhere? Okay. Then the other two that I need to do, I can actually just use the symmetry here because this has to be a point, and then that's your other point right there. Then you just do your best to draw in a parabola-looking thing. Which I sort of missed that point, but I'm not going to redo it. It's hard to do it when my shadow covers the thing. It should look something like that. Let's make a bigger point there. That would be, cra be crazy, wouldn't it? All right, so everybody good with me so far? What's the domain here? Okay, good. All real numbers, so it's negative, negative infinity to positive infinity. My range goes from? Negative infinity to positive six. Yeah, and is six open or closed? Closed. Do I have x-intercepts? Yes, okay. Do I know exactly what they are? No. All right, so in order to find my x-intercepts, I set y equal to zero, so I get zero equals negative three times x minus four squared plus six. Right. So I do not want to square out that x minus four. Okay, it's going to be much easier if I don't. So I'll subtract 6 from both sides and get negative 6 equals negative 3 times x minus 4 squared. Then what can I do? Divide by negative 3. So I get 2 is equal to x minus 4 squared. Then what can I do? Square root. Now I can take the square root of both sides. And on the right-hand side, I get x minus 4. What do I get on the left-hand side? plus or minus square root of 2, plus or minus square root of 2. Notice there are two x-intercepts here. So then I can add 4 to both sides, so I get that x equals 4 plus or minus the square root of 2. There are two x-intercepts that you can actually see and everything. So when I come back over here, this is 4 plus or minus the square root of 2, comma, 0. That's my x-intercept. You can do it like that, that's fine. All right, so the y-intercept, is, is there one? Yes, do you know exactly what it is? No, okay, we're gonna go out to figure that one out also. So to do that, I want f of zero. f of zero is equal to negative three times negative four squared plus six. So negative four squared is 16 times a negative three gives me what? Negative. 48 plus 6, so that gives me what? Negative 42. So you have a y-intercept at 0, negative 42. Do we have any critical points? Yes. We have an absolute maximum. Where? Or six and check this out. Oh, I know. All right. <laughs> so, is it increasing anywhere? No. Yes. From negative infinity to what? Four. Good. And then from four to infinity. As x approaches infinity, what happens to f of x? Negative infinity. And as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. All right. We all good so far? Okay. Let's flip it over. Now, we're not going to actually graph, we're not going to actually plot the um, anchor points on the graph this time because it's just something that you don't necessarily have to do, um, but you just need to be able to think about them. So what's this one called? Square root. 
Okay, so this is the square root function. So f of x is equal to the square root of x. How many transformations do you have? Three. Okay, so the first thing we have is that three, and that three does what? Good. Vertical stretch by three. That negative I know is a reflection. It would be a reflection in what? The y-axis. And then that two is going to do what? Right two. Okay. This is what my square root function looks like. So let's just talk about what the anchor points are here. Remember, the anchor points should be just whatever makes sense for that particular graph. Well, 0, 0 clearly is a good one. Um, 1, 1 would be a good one. But then I don't want to use 2 because I don't want the square root of 2. So then like 4, 2 would be a good one. So there's three of those. And you don't even have to put them on the little sketch. I'm just doing that so you can understand what I'm talking about there. I mean, you can, but you don't necessarily have to do that every time. So I'm going to start with 0, 0. Vertical stretch, still at 0, 0. Reflect in the y-axis, still at 0, 0. Then I go to the right 2. There's my new 0, 0 point. Okay. Then my next anchor point would be 1, 1. So I start with my pencil there. Vertical stretch by 3, so 1 times 3 is 3. My y value becomes 3. I reflect in the y-axis, so I end up over here. And then I move to the right 2, and I happen to be back in that same spot. Okay. Did I lose you? <laughs> yes, I lost you. Okay, so I started at 1, 1. Vertical stretch by 3, so I end up at 3. I reflect in the y-axis and then I move over. Okay. okay. So then my next one would be at 4, 2 is where I start, right? Vertical stretch by 3, so that 2 becomes a 6. Then I reflect in the y-axis, so I end up over here. And then I move to the right two, and I'm right there. And those are the only three points that I need. Okay? Why does it look like that? Because it looks like this, right? Now remember, it's reflected in the y-axis, so it's going to come over here. It looks like this now. Okay, so that's why you still have to kind of have an idea of what happened with it. And it's going to look like that. So since it got stretched, it's taller, and it got reflected and moved over. Okay. Well, thank you. I don't know. Either they're like really, really bad or they're really, really good. There's really no in between. <laughs> it's like so bad you can't tell what it is, or it's like almost perfect. I don't know. All right. Um, so the domain here, what's the domain? Negative infinity to 2. Make sure you're saying in the right order. Like I know what you mean, but some of y'all are writing them backwards. Do I include 2? Yes. My range is 0 to infinity. I never include infinity, but 0 is closed, right? Is there an x-intercept? Do you know exactly what it is? Yes, beautiful. So that is 2, 0. You don't have to do any work there because that's one you actually plotted. Otherwise, it's a guess. Y-intercept, yeah, that one's going to be a guess. So we have to actually find it, right? So my y-intercept, that means I am finding f of 0. So that's going to be 3 times the square root of negative, negative 2. What does that become? Yeah, 2. So it's 3 square root of 2. So my y-intercept then is 0, 3 square root of 2. And it's not a plus or minus because I didn't introduce it, right? It was just that is what it is. Are there any critical points? Yes. There's a what? Absolute minimum. Good. And that absolute minimum is going to be at 2, 0, because that's also my x-intercept. Is it increasing anywhere? No. So there's none here. It's decreasing the whole time. So from negative infinity to 2. All right. Then uh, in behavior, as x approaches infinity, well, does x approach infinity? No. So this doesn't even make any sense here. Okay, but as x approaches negative infinity, what is what happens? It approaches infinity. So we have to talk about in behavior because we can't see down there, right? But here we can see this end. That's why it doesn't even make sense in this part here. Okay, we good so far? Yes. Okay. All right. So we got time. We're going to start the next one. Um, all right. What is this parent function here? Cube root. So this is the cube root. 
So f of x is equal to the cube root of x. How many transformations do we have? Three. Three. Okay. So what does that two do? Good. Horizontal compression by what? By one half. All right, and then that one goes to the left one, and then this is going to go up four. Okay. Your cube root function looks like this, All right? So again, you wouldn't necessarily have to put the anchor points on that or this, but I'll do another just so we can talk about it. Zero, zero obviously makes sense. One, one, and negative one, negative one, until they make sense. But that could just be a line. So we have to have two more. So since it's cube root, I'm going to be way out here at 8, 2, and then negative 8, negative 2. Okay? Does that make sense how I just know those from that function? All right, so let's start with 0, 0. 0, 0, horizontal compression by 1 half still at 0, 0. Then I go to the left one and up 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? So my next one, I would go negative 1, negative 1. Horizontal compression by one half, so my x value becomes a negative one half. Then I move to the left one and up one, two, three, four. Then I would start at negative eight, negative two. Horizontal compression by one half brings me back to negative four. Then I go to the left one and up one, two, three, four. So those are my first three points there. Any questions about how I got them? All right, so the other three I could count, but I do have some rotational symmetry here, right? So basically, it, if I'm here and I go to the left a half and down one, I'd go to the right a half and up one. If I start with that point that was zero, zero, I'd have to go to the left four and down two, so I could go to the right four and up two, and then I have those points where I can draw in my... It's not too bad either. All right, any questions at this point? All right, we will start here tomorrow on this so that um, we can finish up graphing some of these because some different things happen in them, and we definitely need to do some of the reciprocal ones, okay?